In late 1975, English Australian art pop dream pop band Fox released their second album, Tales of Illusion, on GTO, and from it, the track Yuli Yuli. character is but first um the track itself um had this like ringing chiming guitar figure over this for lack of a better term spaghetti western type rhythmic pattern once again i was reminded of cheyenne off of um by <clears throat> ennio morricone anyway um high encircling vocals of nusha airy harmonies my favorite part of the track, though, was that, that bridge that went from D major 7 to G minor. Um, it appeared a couple of times with the harmonies. And then um, the best of all, though, was that quaint, echoey guitar bit that came in around, like, 220 in the track. And um, as the track advanced, the guitar bends 
soared higher amid Nusha's fading notes. Then it went out to the, on that like echoey sound. Yeah, that track out Once Upon a Time in the West. I've 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 um referenced it a few times recently, that dun 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 like that's kind of what the rhythmic pattern reminded me of here. And lyrically Yuli Yuli, get back to Earth. Don't you know you've gone too far? Yuli Yuli, come back home. Oh, you can't live on a star. Will you consider all your friends and your close relations too? Why don't you think it over? We're all thinking of you. Yuli Yuli, get back to Earth. Don't you know you've gone too far? Um, okay, so it's about a person who um, prefers to be up in space. The world is changing colors and some people are getting wise. Why, even in California, is in for a surprise. Yuli, Yuli, get back to Earth. It's almost like a like a nursery rhyme. I was wondering if if Yuli Yuli was like a like a children's story character, maybe of the seventies or something. I but um, a search on that title primarily just brings up matches to this song. Um, I couldn't really find anything. I, or I'm wondering if maybe it, it uh, tied in with the album cover, which is really interesting. It's um, It's got all these little creatures on it. Some of them kind of made up. One like serpentine and then this, what looks like a mixture of a dog and a big cat with this very unique pattern. Yeah. And um, a monkey and yeah, and big, big, giant butterfly. Yeah, very, very cute. Yeah. Um, and uh, let's see, this was uh, the second album that Fox put out in the span of 1975. And even though uh, Nusha only sings on, on a few of the tracks, I think it has a better balance of songs overall than the first album. Actually, my, my favorite track from the first album, Sessions, was a B-side. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> anyway. Um, if I point at the moon, yeah. Anyway, um, let's hear another track from this album. For what it's worth. <laughs> Oh, 
mastermind Kenny Young, an American with quite an interesting career. He um, had managed some bands in the 1960s that were more popular in the UK. I guess. Like, like the American girl group, Rapparetta and the Delrons, who um, turned out to be more popular in the UK, presumably because they came about a little bit after the girl group. Uh, craze had died down in the states, like they were like a late sixties act. They act. They had a a hit over there with um, "Captain in Your Ship," which was later covered by um, Betty Bright and the Illuminations. And um, so he went over there, and I guess stayed, and then and it ended up for well recording two solo singer songwriter solo albums, and then forming uh, the second of which had um, Susan Trainer. The Australian singer um, from the band Wooden Horse that put out a couple of folk rock records um, in Australia in the early 70s. And then um, they formed, she adopted the stage name Nusha Fox and they formed Fox, recorded three albums as Fox. Um, the self titled album Fox, um, which was quite big in the UK. And then um, Tales of Illusion, which wasn't quite as big because um, the public was kind of confused by having the vocals shared among members. This track is a bit more in the vein, you, just with, without Nusha singing, it's more in the vein of the follow-up act, Yellow Dog, which was basically Fox without Nusha. Yeah, and then they record one more album, Blue Hotel, um, with Nusha, then she left. And... Uh, Nusha, very much a precursor to a lot of female vocalists that would follow, like in the 80s and even in the 90s. Like, you can hear elements of this. It, this is almost kind of like the missing link between the ethereal dream pop of the 80s and the rustic, laid-back folk pop of the early 70s. It's got elements of both. It's kind of like that last track we heard. It's, it's on one hand, it's it's um, comparable to bands like Unicorn um, and Home. And on the other hand, I hear elements of, say, Gary Wright's early experiments with electronic sounds and such, like on the album Light of Smiles. Yeah, and... And then when you bring Nusha into the mix, there was even a 2000s band that, that were seen as kind of like um, Fox reincarnated. Yeah, Goldfrapp. A, I, I thought that instantly when I was exposed, when that band was brought to my attention. And then I, I, I did a search on that topic, and it turned out quite a few people, quite a few bloggers at the time, back in the mid-2000s, had made note that that, that, that Goldfrapp was like a reincarnated Nusha and Fox. You know? um, anyway, for more rubies and sapphires from the Fox catalog, see the directory of albums by English F artists linked in the description below. Like and subscribe, follow me on social media, share the video, and leave a comment if there are any observations you have about the two tracks we just heard, the atmosphere, the layer um, uh, of these tracks. You know, one thing that was really interesting about the uh, last track we heard was that it began with these like pre-recorded Indonesian gamelan percussive instruments, and and then it, it cut to the main tune, which you could describe as a rustic, spacey, acoustic strum along with a hazy feel, laid back vocals, airy harmonies, and this instrumental bubbly bit with a sound I couldn't even quite. Yeah, could you make out what that sound was that it was creating that bubbly sound around like 155 in the track? Right before, like, the phased vocal bridge and everything, for what it's worth. Yeah. Anyway, until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most ear travel trimaximist, signing off. <laughs>